Well, how's it going, everybody? And welcome back to another episode here on the channel. My name is Tyler. It is my goal to teach you guys how to become better bass anglers. And today we're gonna be talking about what you probably see behind me and definitely hear behind me, and that is a bridge. Uh, I've been covering a lot of topics lately about why do bass live, feed, and uh, just kind of do life in certain areas on your bodies of water. And uh, a, a few weeks ago, I talked about why bass love to live next to giant mansions. Uh, if you guys missed that video, I'll have it linked below. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about a topic that uh, I feel like people kind of understand as they talk to anglers. Uh, you know, new fishermen coming out might understand, hey, bridges are good, but I don't understand actually why bass migrate to bridges and why a great place to catch not only the numbers of bass, but the biggest bass of your life is right behind me on a bridge. So let's jump into it. So bridges, while being incredibly loud and irritating to fish around, definitely hold some of the biggest bass in the lake. I would say that marinas and bridges are the two locations on your bodies of water, especially here in the south where I'm from in Texas, that hold the biggest bass. And I'm gonna explain some of the reasons why I love to fish around bridges, especially in the winter and the summertime, those two seasons. Uh, and then I'm gonna explain some of the lures that I love to use around bridges. It is definitely a diverse area to fish. It's not a, uh, a singular lure type of thing. You can catch them doing so many different types of techniques. Uh, and then I'm gonna throw, show a few fish catches. It'll probably be B-roll over the video as well. Uh, just kind of showing you guys all the places I've caught fish on bridges across the country that I've fished. So we're gonna start with why fish are on these things. So one thing to know about largemouth and smallmouth bass is that in most lakes, they prefer not to be migratory creatures. So they prefer to, just the way that they're built, uh, to sit in one spot, eat, 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 their entire life uh, and not have to move a whole lot. Now you're gonna have situations uh, like in, I think like, like Hartwell, a lot of the South Carolina lakes, uh, any lakes that have stripers, you're gonna have big bass that kind of migrate with the bait fish. But on lakes like this uh, here in Texas, the fish don't wanna move a whole lot. And so a bridge gives them an opportunity to not have to do that. That is why marinas, in my opinion, are one of the best places to find numbers and quality of bass because you are fishing an area that has deep water access, has tons of bait fish and a lot of cover, both shade and vertical structure for those fish to sit around. And those are the three things I'm gonna talk about about bridges. Bridges are so unique because one, they have immediate access to deep water. In order to build a bridge, usually you're gonna to have to have some deep water nearby or the you know, river authority, lake authority is gonna to have to dredge the area around it to make deep water to you know, su support all the cars going over the bridge. And so most bridges you're gonna find, except for small ones you know, in the back of creeks, they're gonna have access to deep water. And even if they are in the back of the creek, the creek channel is gonna run straight through the under underside of the bridge where the cars are going over. And so you're gonna have access to that immediate creek channel. So that's the first thing. The bass, you know, winter time, summer time, if they are sitting off in that creek channel, they can easily slide up and feed. And feed is the second thing that I'm going to talk about. Bridges hold not only bait fish and crawfish because they have all the rocks they put around and, you know, the riprap rocks, but they also hold one of the highest protein sources for giant bass, and that is the crappie. Uh, if you guys idle under any bridge in America, I'm convinced anywhere from Louisiana to California to New York, you're going to find usually uh, 14 to 18 foot aluminum boats with a bunch of guys with 10 foot whippy rods and those are crappie anglers. And that is a dead giveaway that there are crappie in the area and that usually means there are bass beneath those crappie schools feeding on the crappie. And I can guarantee you some of the biggest bass in your lake are sitting underneath crappie schools within the first few pylons of a bridge. Now I'm gonna talk about kind of location in a second, but uh, I, I love to focus on the first few pylons uh, just because that's where the majority of your bait fish are gonna sit. Out in the middle of the bridge, you're probably not gonna find a whole lot of uh, bait fish and fish activity. It's gonna be kind of more towards the inside. But like I said, bait fish, crawfish, and, uh, and crappie especially are going to migrate towards bridges. Uh, crappie love to sit on vertical structure and so that's what they do. They have tons of pillars to sit on and that's what bass are going to be feeding on. And the third reason why bridges are great places to find bass is because uh, the entirety of the bridge is made up of concrete and rocks and that soaks in heat incredibly well. And especially in the winter time, you know, summertime, the fish are there mostly for the crappie and for the vertical structure and access to deep water. But in the winter time, those fish, just like I talked about in the why bass sit on million dollar mansions video, uh, bass love to sit on bridges because it just soaks up heat the fastest. 
And so you're gonna have times in the winter from January to April, whatever your, your pre-spawn is for you in the country, where everything else in the lake is still pretty cold. You know, the water temps are in the lower 50s, you know, upper 40s. But as soon as that sun pops up, you're gonna see a dramatic you know, tick up of the water temperature throughout the day. It could be five degrees, could be three degrees, but that is oftentimes enough to get the fish in these areas sucked to the rocks to warm up their bodies to get ready for the spawn. But bridges are just great places to find both quantity and qualities of bass. So now that we know, now that we know a motorcyclist is uh, going across the bridge. And one fourth thing that I forgot to mention is that oftentimes a bridge will be the only passageway between one area of the lake and another. So let's say you have a super deep area and an area that's a flat where the fish are gonna spawn. They have no choice but to use the opening of that bridge as a migration route to get from deep to shallow, shallow to deep, or just from point A to point B. Fish do like to travel a little bit. I'm not saying that they're not migratory whatsoever, uh, but bass just prefer to stay in one area, but when they have to move, and they're gonna move from one, a, one area of the bridge to another, they're gonna to have to use the opening. That's why a lot of people focus on fishing kind of the four corners of a bridge, so the, the, the two openings on one side and the two on the other. But really all the rocks around the whole bridge are going to be good if those fish are using it as a migration route. So with that said, let's talk about lures. So the reason why bridges work so well year round is because you can fish all types of lures. I think a lot of people, when they see bridges and they see, uh, you know, professional anglers, you know, Bassmaster, Major League Fishing, they see anglers fishing bridges, most of the time, your mind wants to go, it has to be reaction bait. I have to throw a crankbait, have to throw a lipless crankbait, got to throw a spinnerbait, got to throw a jig head swim bait, an Alabama rig. Those definitely have their play, especially in the pre-spawn, but bridges are so much more uh, versatile than just throwing reaction bait. So I love to throw a drop shot, shaky head, uh, a belly weighted fluke, and in the summertime, within those first three or four columns, uh, you know, away from the, the opening of, uh, of the bridge, you know, riprap rocks itself, those fish love to eat a jigging spoon. You know, a big, flashy jigging spoon. I haven't had a whole lot of success with that, but my buddy Alton Jones Jr., who's a Bass Pro Tour angler, he can tell you, uh, and I'll probably link one of his videos below, he's caught multiple nine, eight, nine pound bass on bridge pilings with a big jigging spoon, and that's not a uh, anomaly. That happens all across the country. So I'm looking forward to uh, this summer trying that out on a lot more bridge pilings. And don't think this is just a largemouth thing. Smallmouth definitely like to be on bridges as well. Uh, and they will eat, of course, a drop shot, a Ned rig. Anything that catches smallmouth elsewhere can also catch them on a bridge. You just oftentimes have a higher possibility of catching fish there uh, because there's tons of them. And the cool thing about a bridge is that people can hit the bridge all day. They can cast the same lure as you are, but the fish may not be turned on at that moment. And the fish can also reload very quickly. And the term reload uh, is a term that anglers use for uh, you know, tournament situations where you go to an area, you catch your five fish, maybe more than your five fish, and then the next day, you might be worried elsewhere, let's say a grass line or a grass flat, that there's not fish left there, that you ate them all, <laughs> you ate them all, that you caught them all, not that you ate them all. And that might be the case for certain areas. But bridges are just super versatile and uh, they're awesome ways to catch fish. I can guarantee you that somebody is cashing a check in every single tournament on your body of water. I don't care what time of the year it is because they are fishing bridges. I was never a science guy in school. You know, I never did well in, in math and science subjects, but I love to dissect why bass do certain things. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy learning about that as well. So thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna have a few clips here at the end of me catching some fish on bridges. So enjoy those clips and we'll see you all in the next episode of Tyler's Real Fishing. Oh yes, yes, let's go on the last cast. Where's it going?
What do I have? Is it a smallie? Oh yes, it's a good smallie. It's a good smallie, right where you should be. Right in the dang current eddy over there. Come on, buddy, come on. You were running at me like crazy, weren't you? Yes. Oh, oh, gotta get a thumbnail. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Bring it in, bring it in. We're just gonna flip you in, yes. Oh. What a good way to end out the challenge. Just a three pound.